What we're going to do in this video is we're going to learn how we can use graphs to solve trig equations such as this one. But in order to do it, we need a little background knowledge of how to solve equations graphically. So I'm going to start with solving a linear equation graphically. We all know the answer to this is going to be x equals 3, but if we can understand how to solve this on a graph, it's going to lend insight as to how to solve our trig equations on the graph. What I could do is I could look at this like two different graphs. I have y equals x plus 1, and I have y equals 4. And the solution to this equation is where those two graphs would intersect. So I'll graph first y equals 4 in purple, which is going to be just a horizontal line through 4. And then I can graph y equals x plus 1, which is going to have a y-intercept of 1, and it's going to have a slope of 1, which means our graph is going to look like this. And so whenever I have my two functions graphed like that, the solution, the x value where they intersect, is going to be the solution to the equation. It's the x value that's true for both of these, and that x value is x equals 3. So we get that that x equals 3 because it's the x value right here where our two graphs intersect. Let's look at a slightly more complicated example, and then we'll jump into the trig. Now let's look at a quadratic equation. If I had this equation, I wanted to solve it graphically. What we're really doing is we're looking at two different functions. I've got a quadratic function, which is x minus 3 squared. And then I've got a linear function, once again, of y equals 4. And if I can graph these and see where they intersect, then we'll know the solutions to the equation. So I'm starting by graphing y equals 4 right there. That's my horizontal line again. But now let's graph this quadratic. It's the parent function shifted to the right three units, if you know your transformation. So if I shift to the right three units and graph my quadratic function from there, that parabola is going to look like this. And so what we see in this equation is that we actually have two solutions. We have x equals 1, which is going to be one of our solutions. And then we have x equals 5, which is our other solution. So we have a solution set of 1 and 5 for this. So now that we have kind of that baseline of how to solve equations with a graph, let's look at how to do trig equations with a graph. So we're going to do this with a very simple trig equation, sine x equals negative 1. And so to this, we need to have a basic understanding of how to graph y equals sine x. And I think by this point, we can probably graph y equals negative 1. But let's just graph these two functions and see where they intersect. So if I graph y equals sine x, we know that sine starts here. And I'll make um, this one on my y-axis, and I'll make this negative one on my y-axis. And what we know is that sine is going to look a little something like this. It's going to kind of rise up and hit a, a maximum, and then it's going to have a zero, and then it's going to have a local minimum, and then it's going to get back to zero. Now, if we graph y equals negative one, that's going to be this horizontal line through negative one. So here's my y equals negative one. Here is my y equals sine x. So right here is the solution. That's the solution. That's where they intersect. And that's going to be at x equals 3 pi over 2. Now, here's one thing that's a little bit tricky about these. You can't just say x equals 3 pi over 2 and you're done because we know that sine is a periodic function. This pattern is going to repeat. If we go another 2 pi units, boom, you're going to hit negative 1 again. And if we go 2 pi units this way, you can kind of see where this would continue. Boom, you're going to hit negative 1 again. So there's an infinite number of solutions to this because it continues forever to the left and forever to the right. So we just need to add, if we want the general solution, we just say plus or minus 2 pi k. This means every 2 pi units in either direction, we're going to hit negative 1 again. So this, this equation actually has an infinite number of solutions. Let's do one last one. Where is tan x equal to 0? So I'm going to graph y equals tan x. I'm also going to graph y equals 0. Well, if I graph y equals tan x, what we've learned previously is that that has a 0 at 0. And then our graph is just going to kind of repeat this pattern. We have another 0 at pi and another 0 at 2 pi. And so if we also graph y equals 0, that's just a horizontal line through 0. And that means just on this little point of the graph that we see, we can see three solutions. We look. It looks like our first solution is that x equals 0, but then we also have x equals pi, and then we also have x equals 2 pi. And once again, this has that same periodic nature that the last graph has. So these solutions are going to repeat every pi unit. So if we were to back this up a little bit, we could just say that our solutions are equal to every pi k units. We could say plus or minus pi k because we can move in this negative direction as well. So this would be our general solution of this equation. So the moral of the story is all you're really doing to solve trig equations graphically is graph both sides of your equation like they're their own function and see where they intersect. 
The trick is once you get to some really complicated ones, it's a little bit hard to see. For example, if I were to say, you know, if, if my graph were to be right here, for example, I'd say, oh, for my graph, how do I really know exactly where that intersection is? For problems like that, that's where it's great to have the algebraic tools that we're going to learn in our next video.